Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, I captured another one from the Gibson Demo Shop. If you're not familiar with the Demo Shop, we do a recap every week of all the coolest ones that I saw. Not every single one, I try to glance over most of them. But actually, this one was from the Mod Collection, which is on Gibson's actual website. The Demo Shop is on Reverb. This one, it, it's not very Christmassy. They had some Christmas limited editions that we talked about in that episode. But they just didn't really do it for me. But this thing, it's like nightmare before Christmas cool. So come my friends, let's go ahead and see what is inside this kind of cool custom shop case. It's got the badge on the exterior, it's all black. Kind of reminds me of like the uh, late 60s reissue Lipton style cases. It's nice to have something a little bit different. Inside here is the guitar I didn't want to tell you about. This looks so good in person, like, oh yeah, I like this. <laughs> it's so boisterous, I love it. It's like an ice blue thing going on here. Now I totally understand where they were coming from on the name Teal Blast. I mean, it really comes out and gets you. It's just very vibrant. So this has the whole widowed attributes to it. If you don't know about widows, check out my Black Widow video and then I've done several more after that. They essentially just paint the whole guitar over that same one color and then they also have the bursts and they leave the coloring on the binding. They have it on the side of the neck and everything. And it's a really cool paint job effect. Pretty much the only thing I, I don't understand at all on this guitar is why? Why is there a brown backplate? It ruins the entire guitar. But so far, the quality of the finish is nice. Looks like we just got some buffing compound right there. So I think this is the first time I've had this custom shop case. It feels just like the other ones, but it's got more of like a shaggy feeling interior. I don't hate it, but I don't know if I love it in comparison to the old custom shop cases, but I think Gibson's lucky enough just to get cases at this point. See, like, what, what the heck, guys? <laughs> you give us a, a black back plate to replace the medallion, but then you have brown. I, I feel like that was just a mistake or somebody's laughing. But we've got our black switch tip in here. And then, of course, our Mod Shop COA here. You open it up, has that same in there. This was inspected by Justice. This replaces the original COA since it kind of got made over. So this is just a regular custom shop custom. The specs will be pretty basic. It's not a reissue of any sort. So we've got the Nashville style bridge. Likely has the nine hole weight relief. Being a modern one, I would guess we'll see a long neck tenon. I'm curious if this started life as a silver burst and there's just something wrong with it. Now that I look at it, maybe there is a very light metallic nature to this finish and that's why it looks so different and then it's got the black so putting blue over top of the black that wouldn't necessarily affect anything yeah it really wouldn't surprise me if this started life as a silver burst so take that silver burst haters you like this silver burst when it turns blue <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench take an individual look at its parts and specs and then we'll get to that playing demo Well, my sneaking suspicions were correct. This started life as a silver burst. No wonder I liked it so much. So if you really want one of these, because this one's already been spoken for, same guy that bought the purple custom, just buy yourself any silver burst Les Paul custom, take it to a paint shop and go, hey, can you put a teal over top of this? I mean, that, that's all they did. They just sprayed over the binding, sprayed over everything. I want to see something that's really funny. They even sprayed over the truss rod. So that's normally a brass color. So it turned green. <laughs> However, interestingly enough, again, they have the wrong pickups in the guitar as compared to what was advertised. So here we go, Les Paul Custom Teal Blast. We go down here to our specs, everything seems to be pretty normal, but it says it had 490R, 498T humbuckers. What do we have? Probably like 57 classics or custom buckers, something like that. So technically I'm the one laughing. These are technically more expensive pickups, but once again, they need to work on that because if they're saying it comes with something and somebody buys it because they happen to like the 498T and 490R in the neck and then they don't get it, I really hope they start uh, working on that a bit. But I get 7.87K ohms in the bridge and eight in the neck. So yeah, those are likely custom buckers, I do believe. 
And to be fair, every time that I email them and say, hey, the wrong pickups were in this guitar, they just send me the other pickups anyway. So <laughs> if anything, it's a bonus when they get it wrong because then you get two sets of pickups. But inside here, we do have a long neck tenon and you can see where the blue was sprayed over the silver. I was really hoping there would be an exposed silver spot somewhere and we do have that in the bridge. Specifically right here where the blue finish chipped, you can see the original silver there and some vague traces of it right here. But as far as markings in the cavities, not too much to talk about. You'll also notice that these pickups do not have any type of cover on them. It doesn't even look like they ever had covers. It's a nice look, all blacked out. I was thinking maybe black chrome covers would have looked good, but I think this the straight up black with the chrome other stuff really brings out the shininess of this finish. Speaking of the bridge, this is a lightweight version, Nashville style, advanced plating incorporated branding. And it's the version that has the Allen key adjusters. So you put your Allen key in there, zoop, zoop, zoop. You can adjust the height of the bridge, even under string tension if you want to. The tailpiece is also lightweight aluminum, chrome covered, made by the same guys. So now let's just take a minute to appreciate this finish. Now that I've got it under these direct, very bright lights and everything, you can see some more like not so nice finish things. Like there's a couple of light nicks and dings. And down here you have a bit of a orange peel phenomenon. It's mainly just all along the bottom. I'm curious if that's what initially sent this to the demo shop. And they're like, hmm, what can we do to get rid of that? Let's spray it blue. <laughs> Love the inventiveness. I mean, they could have took it as far as like giving it blue colored knobs, but I th once again, I think the white complements the chrome and the chrome complements the metallic nature of the paint underneath it. We'll just continue around here. You know, it's kind of a green guitar. I like green and black, but it's like an aqua green. So maybe that's why this one spoke to me. In fact, I would say it looks pretty darn attractive even without a pick guard. But of course it came from the factory with one. I think it looks good with that too. It's hard to choose. But moving on from our maple top, mahogany back, likely once again a nine hole weight relief. We've got a mahogany neck with a true ebony fretboard, 22 medium jumbo frets, mother of pearl block inlays, 24 three quarter inch scale length, 12 inch fretboard radius. It's all that regular stuff. You got a few light tooling marks on the fretboard. Not the worst we've ever seen from the custom shop. Looks like a Corian nut, 1.66 inches, and by the 12th, 2.06. First fret neck depth, 0.89, and increases to 1 by the 12th. Pretty much just your standard C-shaped neck on one of these Les Paul Customs. Medium territory, nice and rounded, but not quite super beefy like an R8 or an R7. I like that side profile view, the teal with the white, and then like the darker black finish here. Here's what it looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret, just a really rounded C-shaped neck profile. Face the headstock, as we were talking about earlier, the truss rod got sprayed over blue too. And that also includes our Gibson logo and the custom block inlay and all the rest of the binding. Looks pretty darn sweet, that blue with the black. I know we talk about this almost every widow, but maybe they could have went as far as replacing the inlays and put an abalone in that had a lot of blue or sprayed them over. I think this one could have pulled it off. I know this kind of matches with the chrome and everything, but that could have put that one even more further over the top. Or maybe that'd be too over the top. Here, let's edit it real quick. You tell me, yes or no. Moving on to the backside, we've got a lot more of the same. Same color binding, same color teardrop shape burst, and this is what the electronics cavity looks like. We'll say the soldering work looks a little bit better in this one. Sometimes they can look a little bit amateur hour in the mod shop, but you also have to remember they have to take apart the original electronics and then put whatever they're actually putting in here, so it'll never look as good as factory fresh. But everything's looking nice in here. You can see that there's some sort of a sticker put underneath here, and then they sprayed over that with a new blue finish. But you've got your output jack on the side, and yes, indeed, these sides are also bursted, just like a silver burst. You've got a strap button right here, and up at the top. I wonder if this is what landed it in the demo shop in the first place, besides just that orange peel. There's like a small ding on the heel. And then moving up the back side of the neck, it's got that beautiful burst. They even blew it over that custom shop decal, which I really like. And the mod stamp on this one, it's nice. I like the way it stands out in that metallic finish. It looks kind of cool. Then you get your now blue serial number. Again, it started life white, dating this one to 2021. 
And then I didn't even realize this was an upgrade. This has locking Grover tuners on it. I didn't notice until I started to take the strings off. It's like, whoa, they don't have hardly any strings on the front. Oh, it's because they're locking tuners. Let's take a second to just appreciate the side. So now that we know that this started life as a silver burst, I want them to do more colors like this. You know, widow out blemished silver bursts in different colors. Like, you know how people say they want to see a blacklight finished guitar? You know what it looks like under blacklight? This would be a good candidate, I think. They just need a little bit more like of a yellowish green over top of it. So yeah, custom shop. I would love to see some more of these. It looks cool. Except for that brown backplate. <laughs> well, let's put this one on the scale. What does it weigh? Almost 10 pounds. 9 pounds, 13.3 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds. <laughs> Okay, let's check out this Spearmint Beauty, starting with our neck pickup here. Overall, I'd say it has a nice clean tone. Really like that neck position. Bridge pickup. And of course that chimey middle position. Let's try it with some distortion. Really like that clarity. Even on the neck pickup too. Now that we know all about the Teal Blast Widow, what are my final thoughts on this thing? 
incredibly interesting guitar. Like the tones, it's what you expect out of a custom shop Les Paul Custom. So if you like that, you're going to enjoy this one. But the color of this is just like nothing I've ever seen. Like I've seen tons of widowed guitars before. However, I can't think of another one that has a silver base coat. So it's a metallic finish. Normally they're just flat colors. Whereas this one, you know, it's just something a little bit more special. I mean, the fact that it started life as a silver burst that already got it a head start here but just that blue silver coloring on the back everything that we've talked about I mean it's on the neck it's on the sides of the guitar this was just a fantastic knockout piece of that week so troglodytes I hope you enjoy checking this out with me today don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode take care As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description. Mm -hmm.